Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to continue our discussion on the gyroscopically stabilized attitude indicator. Now, there's a lot of misinformation about this going around in the flat earth community. They seem to think that because a gyroscope is rigid in space and because an attitude indicator has a gyroscope in it, somehow the attitude indicator is also rigid in space. That's not the case. What is really happening is that the gyroscope is stabilizing the attitude indicator. However, the attitude indicator is self-correcting based on the vector of gravity. And in our last episode on the attitude indicator, we showed it self-correcting. In other words, we caged the gyroscope, we tilted it, uncaged it, and then put it back down to level again. And then we watched the gyroscope over the course of about six to eight minutes correct over 20 degrees of error back to level. And this is due to a device in the gyroscope called a pendulous vane. Let's have a look and see what those are. Now I'd like to thank my friend over at Pilot Effect for the use of his excellent animations. This is the inside of the attitude indicator and what we see right here is where the gyroscope is housed. These brass hangers, and there's two sets of them, there's one on left and right and there's one front and back, are freely swingable based on the vector of gravity. They're kind of like little pendulums, hence the name pendulous veins. Here's a slightly different angle. We see that this brass hanger here can swing back and forth, and this brass hanger can swing left to right. Now underneath those pendulous veins are openings into the case of the gyroscope. You see the little slit right here, there's another one here, and of course there's one opposite each of these. Now in this view from beneath, you see the function of these veins. So for example, this pendulum right here can either move forward or back, and this one moves left or right. As it does so, it will uncover one of these veins, and it will cover the other. That's because they're slightly offset to each other. Now if these green lines represent the brass pendulous veins, you'll see that there's an opening here above this horizontal line, and there's one below it. There's one to the right and one to the left of the vertical line. So as this vertical pendulum slides forward under the force of gravity, it will cover this hole, but fully expose this hole. Likewise, this vein goes back and forth. It will either cover, it'll cover that hole and expose the other one, or vice versa. Now under stable conditions, when the gyroscope is balanced, these holes are half covered by those little brass pendulums. Well, what are the functions of these pendulous veins? Well, there's air going through the gyroscope, and if you uncover one of the veins, air will escape out of that vein, and it won't be opposed by an equal amount of air escaping from the opposing vein. Now, when you place an external force on a gyroscope, you get something called gyroscopic precession. Let's see exactly how that works. Now, as you uncover this little port, it creates an external force due to the air rushing out in the direction of this green arrow. The force that is applied to the gyroscope, specifically the angular momentum of the gyroscope, will be 90 degrees to this due to something called the right-hand rule. And as a result, the gyroscope will be tilted forward based on this application of a side force, like so. So, here's the applied force. Here's the direction that the gyroscope moves back into balance. Now, while these animations make things easy to understand, as you can visualize what's going on very clearly, nothing really beats seeing it on a real attitude indicator. And fortunately, we have a very nice video of that from Wolfie 6020. Let's have a look at that. So even though this is an electric attitude indicator, it still uses a series of pendulous veins and air pressure for the correcting. Now, the way it generates that air pressure is that the rotating mass also has built-in impeller vanes, and that creates the airflow that is guided out through the four ports, which are controlled by the pendulous vanes, which we'll take a look at now. So if we spin the gyroscope upside down, you can see that little brass tab. As I just rotate the gyro slightly left and right, you can see that under the normal weight, that little brass arm is exposing the hole or blocking it. So that's actually one of the pendulous veins, and that's how the 
Jaro operates to correct itself. And what I'll do is I'll just reposition the camera underneath and I'll have it looking straight up underneath the gyro so it's oriented in its normal operating position and you can see the pendulous veins from underneath. But just note how they are in fact just opening and closing that one port. There are four ports like that and it is the air pressure coming out of those ports either blocked or opened by the pendulous veins that does the correcting. So this is a bit awkward because I've got the camera pointing straight up and it's a bit hard for me to see what's actually in the video but I'm holding the gyro directly above the camera so we're now looking at the pendulous veins. Now what I'm going to do is cage the gyro so that the body of the gyro does not move as I tilt and rotate the attitude indicator myself. Now when I roll left and right you can see very clearly that pendulous vein is swinging left and right in accordance with the roll. When I move the gyro fore and aft pitching you can see that the other pendulous vein is also swinging fore and aft. Now it is that movement which either covers or uncovers the airport and causes the correction to occur on the gyro and that's why it is able to always self-correct back to level. So let's take a look at this pendulous vein in action. Now when I move that gyro fore and aft you can see the pendulous vein is either opening the port or closing the port. Now what is occurring on the other side is the opposite. When this side is closed the other side is open and when this side is wide open the port on the opposite side is closed and it is the direction of the misalignment that determines which airport is going to be open and therefore the gyro is going to be corrected by the air pressure coming out of that side. Now you'll see that if I move the bottom of the gyro towards the front of the unit, the front of the unit is at the left of the video, if I move that bottom part towards the front you'll see that this side port is closed. Now if I reverse the unit, turn it around and again move the bottom of the gyro towards the front of the unit which is now at the right of the video you'll see the port is open. So that's the opposite of what we had on the other side of the unit. And the same thing is occurring when the gyro is misaligned in roll and that uh, other pendulous vein will be acting in a similar fashion to open one airport or the opposite one depending upon the direction of misalignment. So just to clarify, the only time you will have one port open with its opposing port closed is when the unit is misaligned. Once it has corrected back to level, we have a situation where both ports will be half open. So there will be an equal amount of air pressure coming out of both sides of the unit and therefore there is no correcting force being applied. When the gyro starts to misalign, even just slightly, you're immediately going to get a difference in how much one port is open compared to the port on the other side and that is immediately going to result in a correcting force being applied to bring the gyro back to level. So remember when it's level both ports are open equally. As soon as there's a misalignment one port will open more, the other one will close more and there will be a correcting action. Now remember this correcting action occurs any time a misalignment occurs. It doesn't care whether that misalignment is produced by normal precession of the gyro or by extreme maneuvers if you're flying aerobatics you could throw the unit out of alignment or simply by flying around the curvature of the earth. The unit doesn't know what is causing the misalignment. It simply responds 
to any misalignment immediately by correcting it back to level. Now here we see an electric gyroscopically stabilized attitude indicator. Uh, here you see the front face, the sky is blue, the earth is brown, the airplane is this kind of horizontal line right here. Let's go ahead and put this in motion and have a look at the pendulous veins. Now as he disrupts it, you can see the pendulous veins right here. Notice that they're offset a little bit because you want to cover one of the ports while exposing the other one to create that side force. Let's look again. Now, you see the pendulous veins moving around under the influence of gravity. The gyroscope is tumbling. And now what it's doing is it's trying to right itself. See, there's the open pendulous vein right here. And here is the pendulum that will cover that vein. So you see how as it evens out again, the pendulous vein comes down and covers half of it. The stable position for this is each pendulous vein is covered halfway and that means everything's in balance. Notice it's covered on that particular one right here and then as it comes back into balance it opens up about halfway. These pendulous veins are solely dependent on gravity. And once again, we're stable. Now, as was clearly demonstrated in the initial video in this series, the gyroscopically stabilized attitude indicator will self-correct back to level, given enough time. How much time is enough? Well, it will correct about 20 degrees of error in about eight minutes. Now, in real life flight, at jet speeds, you are going about one degree of curvature every eight minutes. And what this means is that the pendulous veins will self-correct the attitude indicator to true level based on the downward vector of gravity about 20 times faster than a jet aircraft would require it as it went over the curve of the Earth. In other words, you cage the gyro, flip it completely upside down, uncage it, and return it back to normal so that it reads basically upside down, which is 180 degrees from true, which means that the ground looks like it's up and the sky looks like it's down. It will correct all the way back to true level, 180 degrees, in about one hour. Now, a flight that would require the airplane to flip completely over, quote unquote, such as a flight from New York down to Australia, which is on the other side of the Earth and which would result in a gyroscope appearing to flip 180 degrees. That flight will take approximately 24 hours. The attitude indicator will self-correct within one hour for that entire 180 degrees, some 20 to 24 times faster than needed. So the flat earth argument that an attitude indicator somehow proves that the earth is a flat stationary plane is just completely debunked due to the presence of these pendulous veins. Now one last point. Some of the flurf daddies out there are claiming that aircraft attitude indicators didn't always have pendulous veins, and that's true. As I noted in my last video, the original attitude indicator was a mason jar half full of motor oil. Then we went to gyroscopically stabilized attitude indicators, but like the gyroscopically stabilized heading indicator, they needed to be reset due to movement over the surface of the earth every 15 or 20 minutes. Adding pendulous veins to the attitude indicator eliminated the need to constantly readjust it and bring it back to level. But it always amazes me these flat earthers try and bring that up because the fact that it had to be readjusted every 15 or 20 minutes before the advent of pendulous veins does not help their case of a flat earth at all. In fact, it argues very strongly for a spherical earth curving at one degree every 60 nautical miles, but they don't think that through very well. So, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you for stopping by. We'll get this out and uh, see what they have to say. Take care.